Hi, was that Alan that I just heard? You have your you have your shirt on. You look like a pro. You got your bike behind you. Even your hair looks like you've actually been riding. Like, what the heck's going on? <laughs> yeah, I got got a little helmet head. Uh, yeah, thank you. Yeah, this is actually a real a real photo from last year's event. Oh, you mean it's a background photo? Yeah, so it's not, the tour de cure is not going I on right that now. Was real. <laughs> I mean. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Hey, um, welcome everyone, if you can hear me. Yes, I can. Terrific, terrific. So welcome, uh, grab your uh, favorite beverage and uh, your snack, and we've got an action-packed uh, full program for this evening. We've got an hour allotted for this, and we're gonna um, uh, just get started right away. and. Uh, uh, move forward. So um, welcome to the virtual kickoff uh, to learning what we're going to be doing on October 18th and all the way up up to then. Um, uh, just wanted to say um, hello to all of you. Um, love your uh, background screens. Um, hello to uh, our team here, the South Bay Mashers, who are killing it this year with over $21,000 raised so far, leading, leading the pack. And uh, I think quite a few of the Mashers are joining us by, by phone today. Uh, so with that, um, we'll go forward to the next slide. And Alan, I'll, I'm going to turn it over to you for the time being. Sure. Um, first and foremost, just wanted to say thank you to all of our speakers here today and uh, everyone that has joined uh, this call today to officially kick off vir the virtual Tour de Cure for both the wine country and the, the Silicon Valley uh, Tour de Cure. Um, Vivian, if you could go to the next slide. I'm going to start this, uh, you know, present. Oh, and, you know, first and foremost, many thanks to our our kickoff sponsor, Amaris and Pure Cane for making this all possible today and for hosting this event. Many thanks to all of you all. We're gonna uh, talk a little bit more about Pure Cane uh, in a little bit here, but um, thank you to Pure Cane for making all of this possible. And the next slide, there we go. All right, so three words I'll start to you know kick this off and that's tick, tick, tick. Um, every 21 seconds, someone is diagnosed with diabetes. Vivian, if you want to move on to the next slide, there is over two, 34 million Americans living with diabetes right now in the United States. And right here in California, there's over 2.5 million Americans. Tick, tick, tick. Um, what is probably even more serious than that, there's over 88 million Americans with prediabetes. In California, there's 13 million Americans with prediabetes, and a good portion of those folks probably have undiagnosed type 2 diabetes. Tick, tick, tick. 85% of Americans uh, with prediabetes actually don't even know that they're living with diabetes. Right now, as we are in this COVID-19 world, you know, we're very focused on, um, on, you know, staying at home and being sheltered in place to protect our health and our safety. Um, but the diabetes situation is very similar to COVID-19. In fact, it will talk a little bit about how diabetes and COVID-19 do not mix. But as you'll you know, find out here shortly, that there are some complications uh, related to COVID-19 um, and diabetes that we'll talk about. But when I think about bending the curve and, and, and preventing diabetes in the future, you know, we were the, we were the first folks trying to bend this curve and, and people with diabetes are disappropriately affected by COVID-19. So um, tick, 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 we are sleepwalking into the 21st century. Um, Vivian, if you could go on to the next slide. And if we don't start taking this seriously, um, we're going to overwhelm our healthcare systems. And you're seeing a little bit of that right now, right? You know, as as we all are affected by you know COVID-19. But just to illustrate, you know, how serious you know diabetes is, I'm actually going to not use this text on the slide, but just to describe, you know, essentially what diabetes is. Um, insulin is kind of like the key that opens the lock to your cell doors. And without that key, you're not able to get your cells nutrition. Um, so think about 
think about that now if thousands of cells maybe you don't have thousands of to be able to open up those cells right it's type 1 or type 2 diabetes you need insulin to be able to open up these cell doors to nourish your cells and if you don't unfortunately all that uh, glucose and that nutrition stays in your blood and becomes toxic over time that's essentially what, what diabetes is and that's why it's so serious if we don't you know, manage diabetes we do develop complications and we're going to tell you a little bit more about that here in a, a few slides maybe if you could please move on to the next um, and so there's a you know a number of different types. I think everybody here is probably familiar with the various types of diabetes. Gestational diabetes is a, a rare form of diabetes that occurs during pregnancy. It often goes away, but women that develop gestational diabetes are 70% more likely to develop type 2 diabetes. And that goes for their, their offspring as well. Uh, type 2 diabetes, which used to be called adult onset diabetes, is when your body just simply does not have enough of those keys to be able to unlock, unlock all those hundreds of thousands of cells in your body. So in your body. So essentially it's unable to use insulin properly or make enough insulin to, to reach those needs. Uh, type one diabetes used to be called juvenile diabetes because children, you know, young adults, you know, are affected by type one. It's an autoimmune response where your body unfortunately destroys your beta cells, which make insulin. Um, the sad thing about the names of these these, these types of diabetes, we actually had to change the name back in the early 2000s because children were getting adult, a diagnosed with what was referred to as adult onset diabetes. Tick, tick, tick. It reminds us again how serious this condition is and how relevant it is for, for all of us. Vivian, if you could, thank you. So this is just an illustration of some of the uh, the complications of diabetes. I'm not gonna go into all of them, but obviously right now we're seeing uh, some short-term complications. If so, if we're not taking care of ourselves and we're not keeping you know, our blood sugar in check, COVID-19 complications is a, a real serious uh, matter. Another short-term complication is uh, obviously hypoglycemia or a low blood sugar. So the work that we do, you know, falls into four different buckets. First and foremost, we wanna raise awareness about diabetes, about this warning signs of diabetes, about the different types of diabetes, about the risks associated with diabetes and its complications with the risks of COVID-19. It's a very important part of the work that we're doing right now. Um, another major focus of the ADA is to fund innovative diabetes research, not only for type one or for type two or gestational diabetes, but also for the complications. And in fact, just a couple of weeks ago, we had our scientific sessions, which is the world's largest diabetes conference, where a lot of this uh, research kind of is run, brought to the, the, the forefront of the stage. Um, so there's some really exciting uh, research announced there. Now, all that is made possible thanks to the, the great work that you all do um, by, by raising money for this mission. We also um, improve medical care for diabetes, whether you know it or not. The ADA is in every hospital system you know, across the US. We set the gold standards in diabetes care that, where the you know, physicians are using our treatment plans, our algorithms you know, to care for their patients. We also provide CME, you know, continued medical education for uh, healthcare professionals to advance their understanding of diabetes and to keep up with the latest and greatest. And then last but not least, we engage the diabetes community through events like the Tour to Cure. Um, which you know it means so much you know to many of us living with type one um, or type two or prediabetes or even gestational um, and then also another method to engage in the community is our advocacy work and uh, you know we are the strongest diabetes shop when it comes to advocacy and um, you know just a few weeks ago actually we were able to help cap insulin here in, in uh, California at 50. Now it's not there yet. We're gonna talk a little bit more about it, but it's just a testament to the, some of the great work that we do in the advocacy space for diabetes. This extends beyond that to you know, our COVID-19 response as well, because people with diabetes are you know, discriminated against. We are working really hard, harder than we ever have before to make sure that uh, people's rights you know, are protected. So we have template letters, we have legal explanations, a whole hub of information for people with diabetes that they can use to um, share with their employers or you know, any of their, their stakeholders. 
Um, so if you haven't visited this link, diabetes.org slash coronavirus, please do and please share this with your friends and family members. Um, another element uh, obviously is professional education. So we're working really hard to make sure that healthcare professionals are up to speed with diabetes and COVID-19. We have a web series on a professional basis as well. And then, as I mentioned earlier, advocacy right now is a really important. Um, and in fact, you know, as people are losing their jobs, access you know, to medicine, access to care is a real issue, even access to healthier foods. Right now, as us, you know, people who live with diabetes are sheltered in place and you know, not getting access to these things that we need. So a lot of work that we're doing right now is to you know, reduce the cost to make sure that there is continued coverage of care uh, moving forward during these times if people are losing their jobs. And you know, the insulin uh, cap that I mentioned earlier is actually a, a benefit of the COVID-19 response because we've been working really hard on insulin affordability for quite some time. In fact, if you don't mind Vivian advancing the slide, nine states have already you know, capped uh, insulin uh, that you know, across the United States. Um, so we haven't quite gotten there yet for California. Now it's you know, at the Senate but we're getting very close. But if it wasn't for COVID-19, to be honest, this probably wouldn't have passed for a lot, a lot, a lot longer duration. So it is my privilege uh, to you know, introduce our you know, first speaker of the, the night, Dr. Calvin Wu of uh, Steady Health. Steady uh, is a telemedicine uh, platform for people with diabetes, which I'm sure he'll, he'll tell you a little bit more about uh, right now. So. Dr. Wu is on the digital front lines of, of diabetes and COVID-19, and he's here to tell you a little bit more about the uh, diabetes and COVID-19. Calvin, over to you. Great. Hi, good, good, good evening, everyone. Um, it's my pleasure to be talking here today. Um, yeah, briefly to talk about something. We're basically a digital diabetes clinic, and so we're, we're definitely on the front lines here, um, continuing care for many of our members. And we're getting a lot of interest, obviously, with um, you know, shelter in place and otherwise. So I'm really happy to, today, though, to be talking a little bit about um, COVID-19 and diabetes and how that's relevant to all of us, really. So. Go to the next slide. So on the first point here, um, unfortunately, people are so I should say, and people with diabetes are not more likely to get COVID nineteen than those with, without diabetes. And I think this is a really important point to emphasize. Um, you know, many experts agree that having diabetes itself is not a risk factor for contracting the virus. Um, those with diabetes are fortunately not a magnet for catching this, and so are essentially at the same risk as anyone else in the general population. And this really serves to emphasize the core safety precautions that keep all of us diabetes or not safer. And those include washing your hands often with soap and water for at least 20 seconds, avoiding touching your face, avoiding close contact with people who are sick, and, uh, and you know, distancing for six feet or more, and face masks. Um, on the second point here, unfortunately, new data is just, re just released from the CDC. It shows that African Americans and Latinos fortunately have three times the incidence of contracting COVID-19. Each of these populations have a greater incidence of diabetes than Caucasians. Um, it's unfortunately likely that uh, social inequities are putting a disproportionate percentage of our African American and um, Latino populations on the front line or in other vulnerable situations. Next slide. Um, another important point, though, unfortunately, if, person, if a person has diabetes and contracts COVID-19, they are twice as likely to die from it as someone without diabetes. Um, so this is emphasizes this distinction here. If someone with diabetes does contract a virus, that's where the concern is that they are more likely to experience more severe symptoms and complications. Uh, fortunately, the majority of people who contract 19, again, have mild symptoms and recover. However, there are now a small number of uh, studies now that look at hospitalized patients with and without diabetes. And fortunately, people with diabetes as a whole are at least twice as likely to die during a hospitalization for COVID-19. So really important that we protect this population. Next slide. Um, people with diabetes who become sick with COVID-19 are, are suffering worse outcomes, as we mentioned, especially with the, the estimate of, you know, approximately 34 million uh, Americans having diabetes. This unfortunately means people with diabetes are among those who are most significantly affected. In fact, about a quarter of all deaths associated with COVID-19 have happened among um, patients with um, diabetes. And that's more than 33,000 deaths in the United States, unfortunately. Um, mortalities are also more likely to occur within a week of diagnosis. 
And finally, the use of ventilators and other extraordinary measures to save lives, unfortunately, is greater as well in this population too. Next slide. Mm -hmm. so, really important that factors that lead to increased mortality and disability include those uh, poor, poor blood glucose control, increased age, and other uh, underlying conditions. One prominent study actually coming out of the National Health Service in the UK actually broke down the risk for type 1 and type 2. And it's really important to see, though, when you see those you know, scary numbers, that poor glucose control and especially increased age are very significant modifiers of these risks. So the good news here is that those who are younger and able to maintain better glucose control are definitely on the lower end of that spectrum. So, um, so we can all do our part there to kind of ensure that um, people are minimize their risk. On the other hand, having other more uh, having more underlying health conditions such as heart disease, kidney disease, all the, the list of complications that Alan just mentioned there does appear to pose a greater risk for for poor outcomes. Oh my God. Ellen, and we go back to you. All right, thank you, Calvin. Um, and you know, before we we separate too too much from from uh, Dr. Wu's presentation, I just want to say thank you as well to Steady for sponsoring uh, the the Wine Country Tour de Cure, and also for allowing anybody that signs up in the next three months, uh, anybody that signs up in the near future, to get a free um, Steady Health services for a period of three months. So definitely check it out. Thank you, uh, Dr. Wu, for the, the presentation here today. And just to illustrate a little bit more about what we're doing here at the ADA uh, for COVID-19, you know, first and foremost, we're all sheltered in place, right? Many of us are living with diabetes. Some of us are at risk of developing diabetes. And, so, you know, some of us are just, you know, participating in the Tour de Cure because we're altruistic and we care about this cause. But it's important no matter, you know, where you are in that spectrum, that we're being active right now, that we're getting out there and that we're getting activity. So the Tour de Cure is a great fitness goal that you should incorporate, that you could work towards throughout the year. We also have a Move Your Numbers campaign, which is a social media campaign that we launched uh, during uh, the COVID-19 response, which is all about trying to get people to move, uh, to be active, and for us living with diabetes to get our numbers, you know, in range, uh, in, you know, into the, the ideal range for, for, for our individual you know, diabetes plans. Um, also, it's very important you know, to you know, pay attention to your inputs as well. Um, so the ADA has a great resource, the Diabetes Food Hub, which I, I strongly recommend checking out. It's great recipes for food and also helps you develop your, your meals and grocery lists as well. It's also very important to pay attention to managing your medication and your stress. Um, and, you know, incorporating technology right now into your practice, um, you know, Steady Health is a great example. Um, also, you know, right now we're enabled via, you know, technology to have this presentation. So technology is at the forefront. Uh, but many of us as well, you know, have continuous glucose monitors and various devices that are actually helping our healthcare uh, professionals manage our our, our situations during this time and to provide great feedback. So CGMs, for example, one of those great ways. And then advocacy is a very important element. As I mentioned earlier, we're fighting harder than ever to make sure that we're protecting the rights of, of people with diabetes. We have a disaster response, uh, it's called DDRC. We've essentially joined forces with Beyond Type 1, JDRF, and many other great diabetes organizations to make sure that people are getting access right now if they need it. Um, the other thing I would say, you know, due to current affairs, uh, you know, we're really focused mm -hmm. on ensuring that everybody has uh, an equal chance at, at good health. So we're really focused on addressing so social determinants of health and um, social disparities. Now, this has always been our mission. We've always done this, you know, African Americans, Latino Americans, Asian Americans, Native Americans, Pacific Islanders are the most at risk of developing type two diabetes. So it's always been the population that we've tried to reach, but now with the increased attention to these issues, we are really um, working hard to address these, these social determinants and disparities so that everybody has a fair chance at health equity. Moving on, please. 
All right. Well, I am uh, really excited to announce our, you know, keynote speak, one of our keynote speakers for the night, the executive chair of the the Wine Country uh, Tour de Cure, John Mello. John is also the president and CEO of Amaris Inc., the uh, maker of Pure Cane. If you're not familiar with Amaris, Amaris is an integrated renewable product company that is enabling leading business brands to achieve sustainable growth. They essentially apply their, their bioscience solutions to connect plant sugars into molecules to produce specialty ingredients like pure cane. Um, John is uh, driving incredible change for diabetes right now. And in fact, he leads our executive committee, which has raised over $100,000 for the Tour de Cure to date. So uh, it is my honor and my privilege to introduce John Mello. John, over to you. Great, Alan. Uh, thank you. And uh, thank you for all the education. There's very, I can't recall a time when I've been with you, and especially in a presentation like this, where I don't, I don't walk away much more aware. In this particular one, I'm going to walk away with tick, tick, tick on my mind, uh, or tick tock. I'm not quite sure which one. And uh, uh, I uh, really feel like the awareness, uh, especially as it relates to COVID-19 and the relationship to uh, diabetes is uh, uh, a great learning and a great, uh, great takeaway, uh, as well as obviously the, uh, the social aspect of it and what it means to different parts of our population. So uh, thank you. Thank you for hosting this. Thank you for having us here. And a personal thank you for everybody that's uh, on and taking the time out of their evening to uh, get caught up on uh, uh, the uh, wine country tour the virtual wine country tour that we're actually planning and in participating uh in helping support uh ada's mission so uh, a huge a huge thank you and i want to make sure obviously uh, to thank tom uh the other board members that are on uh and supporting and also vivian who uh, is my right hand and always makes things happen without her i don't know what we'd be doing um so a little bit of background on, on Amherst, a bit of background on uh, my personal story and why this mission, uh, and then uh, what we're doing with Pure Cane and how we're connecting uh, to diabetes and hopefully making our planet um, healthier. So uh, first on Amherst and, and our history, uh, we were founded by uh, a grant by the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, really focused on a different uh, a different disease, which is focused on uh, uh, children in sub-Saharan Africa that got malaria. Uh, and our whole focus was at the time, a million six hundred thousand children were dying a year. And in that particular case, there was a clear cure, but they couldn't afford it and th or didn't have access to it. So we were founded as a company to use synthetic biology, the ability to engineer yeast uh, that through fermentation could make a very rare ingredient like artemisinic acid to make artemisinin more available and accessible so that children could get access to it and we could save their lives. Uh, and that's the project that kicked off the company. We successfully developed, proved that concept, developed that project, licensed the technology and started serving treatments in 2013. And in the first year of supplying our treatments, the number of children dying from malaria was reduced by about a million children a year. And we've been able to retain or sustain that level uh, and really by making more available again a cure that was already out there so uh, that that's our history uh, on the personal side as it relates to diabetes specifically i grew up in a household uh, of uh, family members my grandmother uh, my father uh, and what i understand is uh, grandparents on both sides that uh, dealt with diabetes their whole lives and, uh, and I got to see the challenge they faced of uh, loving sweets. My father was an amazing sweet tooth. That's where I get it from. So he loved sweets. He loved to eat anything. He'd, he'd actually sneak around the house and find cake and grab the cake. And my mom would yell at him for having cake when he shouldn't actually be taking in sugar. And then we'd obviously have to monitor him all the time to make sure uh, his glycemic index would be in line uh, and, to, uh, and to keep him healthy. And it was a challenge. So I fear, and I'm borderline, uh, and uh, living in that fear and watching what I take in, 
really uh, inspired me when we got approached about uh, making a zero calorie natural sweetener with zero glycemic index impact uh, as a great ingredient to help everybody like me enjoy and benefit from being a sweet tooth without any of the harm. Uh, and that's really the story behind Pure Cane without getting into all the technology. We literally, through fermentation, take sugar cane syrup, take out all the bad and make a great zero calorie sweetener fermentation and using our yeast. Um, and it's been, it's been received very well. We're, uh, uh, we have the top uh, culinary zero calorie sweetener that's now sold on Amazon. Uh, we can, you can buy Pure Cane on purecane.com, which is our own business. We sold out last year. We're sold out for this year's production. And we're excited to be able to really give, uh, provide a solution to the world that can help the world stay healthy. Um, and it, it excites me to hear around the world. I was just on with uh, folks in Indonesia last night. Around the world, people are reaching out saying, hey, we have a population that's not healthy and it's becoming a bigger health crisis. Can you help? And can you help in a way that brings pure cane to us so that you can make a difference? And so I'm, I'm excited. And that's really the intersection I find myself in. An amazing technology and ability uh, to really help make it available, just like we did with malaria, to, to make a difference, to help have people uh, really get to the point where they can have it both, be healthy, and get the sweetness that they uh, that they that they like. So, with that all said, it was so easy to respond to Alan and Tom when they approached me and said, "Hey, you know, uh, I know you've got this pure cane thing. It sounds really interesting. We'd like to try it. But actually, would you like to help us uh, with a wine country tour and help ADA uh, raise money to to really support its cause and and its members?" Uh, and uh, to me, it was a no-brainer, of course. Uh, I want to, I'm here, and I'll do whatever it takes to support, uh, including hopefully accelerating our contributions because I, it's not fair that the South Bay Mashers get to uh, contribute and raise 27,000 by themselves. So we need to step up our game, and I definitely take on, take on the challenge. Uh, so with that said, I won't take any more time this evening, but uh, I just want to thank everybody for being present for their commitment and for their interest in making uh, our wine country, our virtual wine country tour this year successful. Uh, and most importantly, really appreciate uh, Alan and Tom working uh, relentlessly to respond to COVID-19 and still have an event that can contribute and make a difference this year with, while at the same time keeping everybody safe. So thank you. And i um, looking forward to the rest of the uh, content this evening, Alan. Thank you, John. And um, I also wanted to add that John was truly a visionary. He, he saw the COVID-19 response in his brain months before it all happened and helped us actually uh, come up to speed and has been a an incredible advisor as well. So thank you, uh, John. I can't, can't tell you how much we appreciate your, your leadership. And uh, I just got my box of pure cane uh from amazon earlier today actually and um some of you actually might be familiar with pure cane because last year the 2019 tour de cure there was uh pure cane packets in the red rider and the champion uh goodie bags now those were kind of like beta beta tested packets they're all white but since then they've been taking a new shape they're very vibrant um incredible branding so if you haven't tried it definitely check it out uh and you know it is very diabetes friendly i'm not even a a, a sweetener type of person i don't use any sweeteners except for this and I, I highly enjoy it so thank you uh john um i now have the uh the pleasure of uh introducing one of my heroes and some of you uh heard uh, my story um, at various you know, tour de cure events in the past. I was you know, diagnosed with, with type 1 when I was 25 years old. I was confused. I was looking for answers. Um, and I found those answers at the tour de cure uh, three months after my, my diagnosis. And I found my community uh, with the tour de cure. But before that, um, you know, I scoured the internet. I you know, scoured the world for information. I tried to get as much information as I could. And I found this professional cycling group 
that's led by Phil Sutherland. At the time, it was Team Type 1, now Team Novo Nordisk. And this was back in you know the early 2000s. So um, at the time, most doctors were saying, don't exercise if you have type one. And so Phil, uh, when I found his, his story and I found out about the racing team, you know, it showed that anything was possible with, with diabetes and it inspired me. I had, you know, I grew up as an athlete, but I never, uh, I hadn't jumped on my bike since I was in, in high school. So I got back on the bike, many thanks to the, you know, to Phil. And I know that many of us, you know, have also been inspired by Phil. He's a global ambassador uh, for diabetes. He's the CEO and co-founder of Team Novo Nordisk. If you haven't read his book, Not Dead Yet, which was published in 2011, I strongly recommend checking it out. There's a, a quote on the back from Mary Tyler Moore that I have to read. Uh, this book is a must read for all of us with type one diabetes and for our support team of family and friends as well. Phil Sutherland's account of his battle with diabetes and triumph over it seeks, seeks to and succeeds at being an educational and inspirational guide for reaching the full potential that exists in all of us. So without further ado, Phil, over to you. Uh, thank, thank you so much, Alan. And uh, you know, look, to, so, so great to have everyone on, on board today. Uh, yeah. Cal Calvin, amazing to hear what you're doing with the digital health world. That's more important than ever now. John, a, a sweetener that you know, can make food taste great without you know, a bunch of insulin to go alongside it. You know, hallelujah, keep up the good work. Thank you. And, you know, and then Alan, you know, the work that you've done. I mean, it, Al Alan said we, we met very early in his diagnosis, but uh, I'm a firm believer that diabetes only chooses the champions. And you see a very big champion in, in Alan who, you know, got diagnosed, got educated, and then figured out a way through various organizations on how to go out and help as many people as possible, you know, living with diabetes. And you know, Alan, you're a champion. I wouldn't be here without you. So thank you for the invitation. And, you know, proud to be here with the Wine Country Tour de Cure. I did pour a good glass of you know, California red wine to, to celebrate the evening, you know, your area in particular. Uh, yeah, and you know, look, it's, it's an interesting time right now. Uh, yeah, probably more interesting than ever. Yeah, I, I run a professional cycling team, Team of Nordisk, it's all diabetic, you know, guys are coming from all around the world. We have a U.S. Olympic hopeful in Mandy Marquette, who's on the long list for the Olympic team. I've been working with her for 10 years. And you know, another Olympian out of Poland, another Olympian out of Hungary, all living with type, type 1 diabetes. But the reason we do what we do at Team Nova Nordisk is so that we can educate and empower and inspire people with diabetes to go out and pursue, pursue their dreams. That diabetes can be one of the worst days of your life when you get diagnosed. You know, I know for my parents, you know, I was seven months old when I was diagnosed. Uh, mm -hmm. It was a blessing because I was alive. I, they had an answer, but it was a curse because the doctors told my, my mom I'd be dead by 25, uh, if not blind and with renal failure. And, you know, there's so many yeah. stories that I hear of people who their diagnosis day was the worst day of life. And that, that's how it was for a long period of time until, you know, we got to own empowerment and own inspiration and, and own the fact that people with diabetes are chosen to be the champions of health for the society. And you know, now I get kids coming to our talent ID camps. Uh, they're diagnosed on a Monday, and by Tuesday, they've already been accepted to Team Nova Nordisk talent ID camp because they now have a dream of being a professional cyclist and being the inspiration for someone just like them uh, in some years' time. And you know, it's Team Type One you know, was a business plan class project. I, I grew up with diabetes. I live with diabetes. I, I, I managed it very well. I was obsessed with control. And then in college, I met a friend, helped a guy take control, saved his life. You know, this was in the Lance Armstrong heyday of, you know, raising massive visibility for the cancer community via cycling. You know, I was an avid cyclist and I said, we got to do something. So launched Team Type 1, you know, my senior year in college, raised $400 uh, to, at a business plan class project, you know, bought some t-shirts, sold 100 t-shirts, sold sponsorship on the next round of t-shirts. And you know, 15 years later, have raised you know, about $125 million 
uh, on spreading hope and inspiration around the world. And you know, it's brought us this tremendous you know, responsibility, tr tremendous ability to help reach the world. You know, at Team Open Orders, we have about 9 million fans on social media. You know, it's the biggest in cycling, it's the biggest in diabetes, and it's the most connected audience out there in the world of living for what's possible with this disease today. Because thanks to organizations like the ADA, thanks to great events like the ADA Tour de Cure, you know, people with diabetes around America and around the world, you know, now know what's possible when you get diagnosed. It's not as doom and gloom as it was 10 years ago, 15 years ago. <laughs> diabetes today is very much a disease of what you can do. And it gives people access to information from continuous glucose monitors, from blood glucose monitors, for everything that happens in your body. You know, the good, the bad, the ugly, you know, you now have access to that information by having access to the technology that diabetes has provided you. And having access to that technology gives you a chance to make behavior change and do very smart things like go out and ride your bike. You know, and riding your bike, you know, it's, or exercise in particular is the billion dollar drug that never gets prescribed. And, you know, we can out there by, by events like the Tour de Cure, you know, get out and promote exercise, not just to the person with diabetes, but to his friend, or to her friend, to family members, to husbands, to wives, to brothers, to sisters, you know, sons and daughters, and get everyone involved in exercise at any age that they want to begin, but make it a habit for life. Because exercise is a way to control diabetes, exercise is a way to prevent diabetes. Most importantly, exercise is a way to just be healthy and be happy. And that's the responsibility and the, the pride we have at Team Nova Nordis is promoting health and wellness through, to the world by getting active, getting healthy, and being in control of your own destiny. So you see you know, the changing diabetes jersey in the background. Uh, that's what we fly the Team Nova Nordis flag with. And you know, we've changed the perception of diabetes. Uh, when we began, it was everything you can't do. And you know, now there's kids all around the world diagnosed with this disease who are dreaming of everything they want to do in life and they have heroes and athletes who have proved no matter what they want to do, they can achieve it. And someone else has done it before me. So I know it's possible. And, you know, it's, you know, John, hearing the work you've done in Africa, you know, at the startup phase, I mean, that, that's near and dear to my heart. You know, the Team Type 1 Foundation, you know, we've been providing, uh, you know, blood glucose testing supplies to the government in Rwanda for the last 10 years. Uh, you know, it's started with 300 kids alive with type 1 diabetes, most of which were dying from complications from diabetes because they had no insulin, they had no access, everything changed on a monthly basis. To now, you know, just this last year, uh, I guess in January, uh, we got to announce a donation by Abbott Diabetes Care for 12 million glucose trips over the next four years to ensure every kid with type 1 has access to six glucose trips a day, you know, no matter what. Uh, the, and because of we've taken that burden off the government, you know, the government now has funding to pay for insulin. So if you have type 1 diabetes in Rwanda, you have access to insulin, you have access to test strips. And, you know, my team, you know, Team Evan Ortis has been there racing, winning uh, for the last 10 years, you know, giving access to dreams for all those kids with, with type 1. So it's, yeah, it, it's been you know, a great journey. Yeah, I'm, I'm really proud to be here with the, you know, the wine country to here, you know, y'all have done so much as a leader and example for the rest of the, the country on what's possible from a fundraising perspective. You've got one of the most robust, you know, fundraising groups and just the teams that are going out there and achieving great goals and great objectives. And, you know, this, this is a time when the not-for-profits of the world, I mean, trust me, I, I, I run a, my own not-for-profit foundation and it's a tough time right now. Events are canceled. Uh, you know, don't funding is down significantly amongst all not for profits all over the world. And if you're if you've been touched by the ADA, and you've been touched by the bike, you've been touched by diabetes, then you've been given the chance to really make a bigger impact this year than you've ever made before. And you know, we just did a, a virtual 5K ADA at the scientific sessions. We had 5,000 participants, I guess 10,000 registrants, which is 10 times what's ever been done before. So while virtual you know, might rob us of the chance of being together 
and suffering together in person as we conquered that 100 mile goal, uh, it can also bring us together in a, a form that's never been done before and allow us to reach friends and family from all corners of the earth. Because you know, before the virtual ADA uh, tour de cure, you, know, you were only gonna recruit friends from you know, your local environment to come ride with you. But the fact that it's virtual now means if you've got a buddy in New York, if you have a, a sister in Australia, a friend in China, no matter where it is in the world, you can invite them to not only come participate because it's free, but you can invite them to come fundraise because it's meaningful. And in this time, especially with COVID, you, know, you saw the grim statistics for you know, what can happen with COVID and, and diabetes. You know, the, the need for people to be empowered to take control is greater than it's ever been right now. Because life with diabetes is very much more life and death than it's ever been before. And by empowering people to get on bikes, be active, take control of their disease, you know, and just live a good life, live a healthy life, we can save a lot more lives now, especially in the US, than we've ever saved before via this, this event. So let's do it together. You know, I know the kids in Rwanda will be here at the, at the Wine Country Tour de Cure. Uh, all of the Team Nova Norris athletes from all around the world will be here at the Tour de Cure. We're about to kick off racing again in Europe uh, and around the world. You know, and you know, our athletes have been so grateful for our sponsor, Nova Nordis, for just the tremendous support they've shown us through this very difficult time. And they're looking forward to repay it by being the most visible, most active, most empowering team in the world uh, as we race to change diabetes, race to inspire, educate, and empower the world to know that any dream can come true. So you know, again, Alan, thanks for involving me in the Wine Country Tour de Cure. You know, it's, a, it's a privilege to be involved with such a dynamic group of people. And from all of us, Team of Norisk and the Team Type 1 Foundation, uh, we're proud to be a part of your team uh, and just to make a difference, raise some money, and you know, take care of the things that need to be taken care of for all of us living with and for those who don't yet know they have diabetes. Because everyone has a chance to take control, and it's events like this that really empower the change that's needed uh, to inspire dreams for people. So uh, thank you. You know, and you know, we're here to help, whatever you need. And it's just great to be in such a phenomenal company uh, with all from the West Coast tonight. And you know, again, I'd just like to challenge you because I'm a person who loves to be challenged. Bring as many people as you can. Let's raise as much money as you can because the ADA, which is a tremendous organization, needs, needs all of our help now more than ever. And that help now more than ever will be exponentially impactful than it's ever been before. So thank you for being here tonight. Thank you for your contributions. And let's go dream big as we reach for uh, the big event, virtual event, you know, in the fall this year. Wow. Well, thank you, Phil. I think you can drop you can drop the mic, and and uh, it's gonna be hard that hard to follow follow this. We really appreciate uh, everything that you you just said. Um, if you are not familiar with Team Type One, the foundation as well as Team Novo Nordisk. Uh, definitely visit teamtype1.org or teamnovanordis.com uh, for more information. So did I get those right, Phil? Did I get the yep. teamnovanordis.com? All right, excellent. Well, thank you, Phil. Um, our next speaker is one of our, our, our future change makers in uh, the diabetes space. Uh, Simi is our youth ambassador for all of our events in, in Northern California. She has an incredible story. I'm tempted to, to already tell you some of it, but I'm not going to steal her thunder. Simi, over to you, please. Thank you, Alan. Hello, my name is Simi. I am 15 years old, and today I'm going to be sharing my story with diabetes with you. So at first, when my journey began, I was just Simi. Simi was fun, outgoing, and loved cupcakes. Simi, who you could tell anything to, and she wouldn't tell anyone. Simi, who had a dream. My life was normal. I was a 12-year-old who had more dreams than there was time in life, who hated going to school just like any other kid you meet. I had everything I could ever want. I was vice president of middle school, getting straight A's, had all the friends you could need, and was happy. From the young age of as far as I can remember, I had a sweet tooth. My eyes would light up at the sight of ice cream, cupcakes, candy, you name it. However, to make myself feel better about it, I would tell myself it was only human. 
a quick fun fact that I love sharing with people is that the reason why humans always crave more for anything sweet that you eat dates back to the time of our ancestors when they were Neanderthals. And for those of you that didn't pay attention in sixth grade, that means an early human. You see, back in the day when our ancestors stumbled upon something sweet to eat, they carried an instinct that told them that they might not find something to eat again for several days, so they should load up for the long term. As generations went on, the instinct passed on. The problem now is that we are able to eat whatever we want at any given time we desire. For this instinct was meant to provide for times where we weren't able to eat for several days. As I grew up, I found it easy to blame my eating habits on this fact that I heard from my science teacher. I would come home from school and eat whatever I could find in my pantry, and at times, or even I thought it was too much to eat, I would eat it anyway, and tell myself that my diet would start tomorrow. Keep in mind that I told myself this every day so that tomorrow never technically came. There were numerous times where in order to make myself feel better, my mom would make our whole family go on an attempt to diet, but it never really worked out due to the single fact that my family loves to eat. Let me tell you, if I had a dollar for every time my mom made us go on a diet, I would be swimming in money right now. Anyway, let's look at this like a movie. If the movie had no climax or twist, then I can assure you wouldn't have much in the box office. So on September 29th, 2018, was when my movie had its climax. It was the minimum day at school, and my mom and I had lunch plans for later in the day. I danced my way to her car as she pulled up in the pickup lane of my middle school. I opened the car door, expecting her and my sister to be smiling bright, or at least to be as excited as I was. I sat down and I picked up on this anxious vibe that piled across the car. I knew something was wrong since the radio wasn't turned on, and she handed me this lunchbox filled with so-called healthy lunch with lentils and a salad, and I looked at her and I frowned. I said, is this a joke? I've been waiting the whole day. We made eye contact in the car mirror when she told me we were going to the hospital. There were a number of possible reasons that my mind had stirred up, but somehow managed to convince me of one. Once I had officially gotten the news, my life was turned upside down. I was a 12-year-old with type 2 diabetes. I remember on the drive home from the hospital, it was pin drop silence. This anxious vibe that I had first sensed in the car was back. She drove me to school, and for the first time in my middle school career, I discovered the nurse's office. My new lifestyle included pricking my finger before every meal in order to understand what I needed to eat. Upon my first day of pricking my finger at school, I discovered two other boys who were there before me. From further investigation, I discovered they were living with type 1 diabetes. Believe it or not, we hit off immediately. We called ourselves the Diabeto Amigos and even had a little handshake to go with it. It wasn't too bad, was what I told myself. I tried to conceal the secret of having a disease and fear that my middle school social status would go down. But it's middle school, so the word eventually slipped out. To my surprise, they were pretty accepting for the most part, but of course, in a bunch of grapes, you will have a couple of sour ones, but I just brushed them off. Socially, I was okay, but I didn't realize how much of a dietary change this would be. My family comes from Indian descent. And if you've ever had Indian food before, you know how rich in oils and fats it can be. As of the day I got back from the hospital, with no questions asked, we started this new diet of the grossest green stuff you could imagine. That's when we decided that living with diabetes shouldn't be a punishment. You should be able to enjoy what you eat, whether it's healthy or not. For months and months, I stuck to a diet plan of an egg in the morning, mushrooms and spinach in the afternoon, and salmon for dinner. I'll admit it got tiring after the first two weeks, but it's not like I had a choice, so I stuck with it anyway. After four months, meaning around December of 2018, I went to check my A1C number again with my mom. After results had come back, I was pleased to see that my work had paid off. I got my A1C number from a 7.2 to a 5.11, and that was the best news I could have gotten in a long time. Besides diet, I had already been involved in several sports like soccer five times a week and taekwondo three times a week. While continuing my efforts toward a, towards a healthy life, around August of 2019, I contacted the 88 uh, to share my story. I knew that like me, there were several others, especially youth, who needed support during their journey with diabetes. As a freshman in high school, I will be serving my first year as a youth advocate for the 88 Bay Area and plan on staying local with them for as long as possible. 
I'm beyond excited to see your progress throughout the tour to cure and I can't wait to hear your stories. Thank you. Thank you, Vivian. Um, I'm going to introduce our next, excuse me, thank you, Simi. Um, I'm going to introduce our next speaker, who is a person I've known for quite a while, a person I've admired. Um, I'm grateful to him as well for taking on the chairmanship of our organizing committee. Uh, without further ado, Brooke Spenson. Hi, everybody. Um, I feel like you've put me in a big spot here uh, following all these great speakers, and I'm not sure I can live up to the to the, the lofty uh, experience that the other guys have and, and ladies have, uh, have presented. So I'll do my best to try to keep it brief. Um, I've been a participant in the wine country and uh, Napa Valley tours since 2010. Uh, and uh, since 2013, I've been co-captain of Team Red. And as Tom said, I've recently been uh, uh, involved in the chairmanship of the organizing committee for the last couple of years. Uh, so many of you people probably know me and have seen me around the event and we've probably ridden some bikes together before in, in over the last few years. I was diagnosed as type 2 in 2000 with an A1C of greater than 10. And if you know anything about A1C scores, that's not really not good. Uh, I knew I had to make some changes, some lifestyle changes. And I started down that road and it took me... Uh, quite a bit of time to 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 get to get that to to uh, progress. Um, I was fortunate enough that the changes I was able to make uh, brought my A1Cs down a bit. It it certainly kept it from getting way out of control, but it still wasn't controlled the way the the doctors wanted me to have it controlled. And it wasn't until I um, found the bike and got back on the bike at around 2009 that it really started to uh, to make an impact. Um, uh, I, uh, it was hard going at first. Uh, I hadn't ridden the bike since I was a kid and that first mile or two around the block was really, really hard, but I kept at it, kept being persistent. And after several months and several, uh, 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 iterations of getting, uh, A1C tests again, I could see the numbers were coming down and definitely the bike was making a difference. Um, in 2010, as I said before, I discovered that the Napa Valley Tour de Cure and uh, uh, was really um, enthusiastic to get, to get involved in that event because I'd been riding my bike long enough to know that that riding the bike was making a difference to my health and I felt that riding in the tour was something I could do to give back and so I uh, enthusiastically began riding in uh, and training for and riding in the tour um, and at the tour that first tour is as Alan said before I met I met my family, I met my community, and found a bunch of men and women who were also struggling with diabetes and trying to get, uh, trying to get on top of it, trying to make changes in their life uh, to, get, to get under control. And we were able to support each other and educate each other. And, and it was the, the beginning of my uh, participation in the tour was the beginning of me really feeling like I was getting my health under control with uh, the support I got from the people that I met, as well as the educational resources that I found through the ADA, it really made a difference in, in my life. So I've got uh, a soft spot in my heart for the tour. I'll ride in it as often as I can, as long as I can ride. It presents to me an uh, opportunity to test my skills as a cyclist and to reflect on the progress that I've made and the, the, um, the, uh, the improvements that I've made in my health over the last 10 years. I'm happy to say that uh, my A1Cs are in the controlled range, six, three, six, four, the last couple of readings, just higher than a, a normal non-diabetic person, but pretty good scores for somebody with diabetes. Uh, and, uh, and I wanna thank everybody for being a part of the tour every year and, and this year in particular, it's gonna be a challenge for us to try to reach our goals a, as a virtual event as opposed to a physical event but I'm sure we can get it done. And uh, I appreciate every one of your participation and thanks again for your time. Thank you, Brooks. You brought us to the intermission. I know we're running late, uh, but this is going to be in the uh, scheme of things, a very late intermission. Uh, we'll 
the rest of the movie will play uh, very quickly from this point out, but we're going to take a moment uh, for everyone to put on their mask if you have it handy. We're uh, then going to uh, open up and take a look at everybody and some of our featured speakers are going to choose their favorite masks. In the meanwhile, um, while you're donning your mask, if you can multitask, uh, take a picture with your uh, phone of the uh, risk, risk I'm test I'm uh, QCR. I'm going to leave my uh, chair light on so you can find your way through. Okay, thank you. We're almost done. All right. Vivian, waiting for you to show us all. Hi, everyone. If you have a mask you want to show, go ahead and uh, turn on your video. I don't want to turn on any video for anyone who may not be ready. <laughs> Let me know if you need any help with uh, turning on your video. Just call out your name or uh, raise your hand. Raise your hand. Vivian, in the um, in the chat box, someone uh, is saying that the, the host stopped the video. Oh, that was earlier when we were starting. You can go ahead and turn it on now. Your uh, no, it's Rich, not starting. Let me go to Rich. Still locked, apparently. Huh. There's Rich. Rodney. Let me get Rodney. Let me get Dave. Not sure why some folks can do it and other folks can't. Gail. Katie. Uh, Katie, I saw come on already. So your video's on. This is Heather and mine's not starting. Okay, Heather, let me come to you. This is uh, Marvin and mine's not starting either. Okay, hold on. Heather, how are you? Um, I don't see a Heather listed under participant. Huh. How are you it's, listed? Heather. It's, it's Heather. It's a, it's a green, the green icon. Oh, under L? Sans? I'm Heather Nagy. Actually, maybe let me stop. If I stop the share, let's see if that can help. Oops. Does that work better? Uh, you just disappeared. Um, it says unable to start video. But now I see Brooks. Uh, <laughs> Try that again. Nope, it says unable to start because you've stopped it. Because I've stopped the share. I shouldn't have done that. Okay. The same is true for Nancy Cottle with the baby. Okay, Hannah, we'll get to Nancy. Although I like the baby better than looking at me. All right, I'm going to make a comment. Everyone who has their red lighter mask will automatically, automatically get up. If um, someone could mute. Thank you. Uh, we'll automatically get a copy of Phil Sutherland's book, Not Dead Yet. And mm -hmm. it's an autographed copy. So there's Brooks. And I see Kate, I think that's Katie Hansen. And Rodney Paul. So there's three people that get books. Is there anybody else I'm missing? Hey, Fred. Hey. What about Mr. Ed? <laughs> I think possibly. I think I got Ed's everyone. Son -in -law. Let's see here. Let me see. Okay. 
There you go, Nancy. Try me one more time, Vivian. Vivian, this is Heather. Okay. H e a t h e r, Heather. Uh -huh. Okay. So I am inviting you to start your video. So make sure okay. you can. There you there go. I am. <laughs> Great. Should we, uh, Brooks, I'm going to let you uh, pick a winner. You know, once again, you're putting me on the spot. Let me see. Eeny, meeny, miny, mo. Greg Sands, what's on your face? <laughs> Uh, we're actually a big Halloween fan, so it's a, a, a period of Halloween designs, skeletons, trick or treat cauldrons. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. What's wrong you got? Looks like it's avocados. Avocados. All right, excellent. Good fats for uh, for healthy food. I've what got else? the Golden Gate, but I don't think I should enter. <laughs> I'll be skewing the results. Uh, Brooks, I also have an avocado tree right behind me. Oh, I see. Excellent. Okay. So we'll we'll let you pick one, too. All right, let's go with Greg. Let's go with Greg with the Halloween. I like that. Thank you. You're probably the, the runner-up. There's uh, one more person joining, Ed Lidman. Simi, do you want to pick somebody? I'm oh, sorry, I didn't hear the original. Yeah, for sure. Uh, Heather's is very appropriate for the occasion today. All so right. my winner's going to be Heather. Very good. And Phil, I'll let you choose someone. And we don't know if you're talking because you have a mask on, but you are. And you're also I, I was talking, but here we go. Um, yeah, Heather, I got to say I'm a fan. Yeah, I say that with, with respect. It looks like you put a lot of time in that. But, you know, Rodney Paul, you know, y'all you you went full tilt. You know, dynamic duo. I, I've got to give my thumbs up there. Yeah, but... Congrats everyone for wearing a mask because it's the right thing to do for all of us. And uh, thank you, thank you for doing it on a Zoom call. If we can do it on Zoom, we can do it everywhere else. Uh, so thank you all. That's right. Back to your, uh, I'll let you pick somebody. Yeah, I'd like to get into the fray here, uh, but my video is not working. Who at who's so whatever, speaking? Whatever you did for uh, Heather, could you do please do for me as well? Uh, who's uh, speaking? Yeah, Pakula. Okay. Vivian. Okay, hold on one second. Uh, well, we're not on the same. Everyone tiles differently. I'm going to go ahead and invite you to turn on your video. Right. I've been doing that. It's not working. I just invited you. Do you see it now? Oh, do I got to go to email to pick it up? No. Um, I've. If you go, I've. I've sent a video invite, so you should be able to receive it. Okay. Where did you send it to? Uh, through Zoom. Oh, Anyone good. want okay. to speak up with how they saw the invite that I sent them? I think now you start your video. If you go down to the start video icon there, it should work. Yeah, I did that. It's right now it says stop video. So I don't think you guys want mm. to stop Is it. your video on? Or you don't have anything yeah, blocking your video? No, no, I got I even got a white light that's flashing, basically telling me, I guess it's doing it. You know, it's funny is that when I look at your screen, I only see a stop video option, which does appear as though your video is on. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's what I'm saying too. So what'd you do for Heather? Cause you got Heather's going. I invited her and I think she started. Oh, okay. you know, I just got an invitation that was right on my screen. Oh yeah, okay. I haven't seen that yet. Are you using a docking station by chance with your laptop closed? No, no, I'm not. No, I'm just connected through uh, Wi-Fi. 
I don't hold everybody up because I know we're running a little bit over, but um, I have a very Calvin, unique task you, to share with the team, so I thought maybe you guys want to see it. Calvin, if you unmute, I'll let you pick somebody. I was going to go with the avocados, actually. I forget that someone already picked Ragani. The avocados. Okay, Ragani. Okay. There we go. You can see Dan. Vivian, do you or John want to pick a mask? I could pick on uh, his behalf. Well, we got to see uh, Dan here. I feel I like my background, so at least I got something. I, maybe that's my fat head there. It, I think I see a shadow. <laughs> yeah, there's a shadow. That's the best mask of all. You can't see it. What a. Uh, uh, the avocados got picked. That was fun. <laughs> yeah. Great. Okay. Well, um, did Greg get picked? Is his a skeleton? Yes, Greg got picked. <laughs> Good skeleton action. I'm not. I guess I'm not seeing the other masks that clearly. Maybe if people got a little closer. Yeah. Gail and Ben, we'd love to see your masks. You're kind of far from the camera. Oh, that colorful one is nice. I think it's on that's on Ben, and then Kimball is uh, that's a black with some other background. And then they said the, Vanessa, there's a mask. Okay. Well, I'll go ahead and select We've the color. Got quite a few winners. Yeah, uh, I'll select the colorful one um, from Gail and Ben. Okay, great. Ben. <laughs> Congratulations to all of our winners and thank you. And uh, we'll move forward as soon as I get my mask off and power through the rest of the uh, rest of the slides. And I promise I won't take long. Alrighty, so we're going to share a screen again. Terrific. So as you know, uh, Tour de Cure has gone virtual. Our date uh, is October 18th. We have a hashtag. Uh, we invite you to use uh, uh, hashtag virtual Tour de Cure 2020. Next slide. I want to thank all of our sponsors. And for the sake of time, I'm not going to um, call out each one, but I do uh, want, in addition to Pure Cane, uh, to also thank our brand new sponsor this year, MGO LLP. Uh, and uh, thanks to our executive committee. Um, MGO has joined with uh, both a team and as a major sponsor in the event. We're so happy to have them on board. And also thanks to BioRad uh, coming back as a major sponsor and also with the team. So uh, thank you to all of our sponsors. Next slide. I wanna thank all of our champions. We have 36 to date. And uh, I'm not sure of exactly who all is uh, with us this evening, but I saw that David O'Sullivan was with us. Thank you, David. Bert Rivera, thank you. I believe Lily Lily is with us. Of course, Brooks Benson. Um, I believe uh, many of the South Bay Mashers are with us. Russ Adam, uh, Tony Babasa, uh, John Yap, Wendy Hull, uh, going down the list, Tony Vieira. Uh, who am I missing? Uh, Linda Yap and uh, um, Shout out if I've missed any of you. Uh, thanks to Kimball Smith, I know is with us. And I believe that, oh, Greg Sands from the Castaways and uh, Linda Sands and Dan Pakula, all uh, champions from the Castaways. Thank you. Yahoo. Welcome, welcome. All right, um, moving on, why go virtual? Uh, this is our best way to um, have the Tour de Cure in this time of COVID-19. Uh, we're um, 
uh, although we're all apart, it's still a great way to connect. It's a great way to get exercise in, and it's a great way to uh, support the Tour de Cure uh, and the goals and mission of the American Diabetes Association. And we've got some ideas to make it fun and inspirational along the way. Next slide. So um, for the day of the event, uh, what should you expect? We're going to have live, uh, we're going to be operating Facebook Live and uh, having a lot of rich uh, content for you uh, with shout outs, interviews, entertainment, um, mission moments, team and sponsor videos, plus your selfies, your short videos and messages and so forth. We'll be uh, posting those all day long. Uh, so please get physical, uh, go out and participate in the activity of your choice, whether you ride, run, walk, whatever distance and location you choose. And I know we've got uh, people joining us uh, this evening, I believe from Illinois, from Massachusetts, from uh, Florida. Florida. Yep. And from Eureka, California, that's a long ways away from the Bay Area. Um, so it, it's truly limitless. You can do this wherever. You can invite friends and family from afar uh, to participate and uh, join with you in the cause. Registration is now free and you only need to uh, raise $100 to earn the t-shirt. Uh, all of the same levels before at uh, 500 and so forth still exist. Uh, next slide. Um, the best way to engage with us uh, in the run-up to tour is on our um, social platforms. We're really pushing Strava uh, this year, a great way to record all of your rides uh, when you join our Strava club at Wine Country Tour de Cure. Um, you will be part of our um, Strava group, which a number is about 50 so far, and I know uh, Brooks is um, a member of that, and it's just a great way for us to be able to applaud you as you build up your miles in the lead up uh, training for Tour de Cure. Also, um, uh, join, uh, uh, like us on Facebook, uh, follow us at ADA Bay Area. We're posting a lot of um, uh, daily updates and uh, information about um, uh, the American Diabetes Association and Tour de Cure there. And we're posting your photos that you submit to us on Instagram at Wine Country Tour. Um, those are hashtags uh, and we encourage you to use them to help build up, uh, build up the support for what you're doing and what we're doing. Uh, next slide. So here's our roadmap. Um, we're going to be uh, showing a number of way stations, rest stops, uh, uh, gas stations, if you will, along the road that leads up. These include team happy hours, team coffees, some internal um, kickoffs, uh, bike clinics, cooking demos, cycling training tips, uh, fundraising uh, clinic, and I'll let you just uh, uh, read the items on the right and much more to come. So uh, next slide. Here's our um, great writers uh, and groups from uh, uh, last year. Just uh, wanted to reminisce with you. Uh, congratulations to our champion, Pat Burley. We plan a lot of champion shout outs along the way. You see some of the people here in this picture taken back in 2019 are doing a pretty good uh, job of social distancing. Uh, so we know it can be done. Um, and we're also planning on having a virtual arch that we'll uh, be showing you uh, coming, coming under one way or the other. We're figuring that out. Next slide. I um, want to encourage you to um, do some easy things to fundraise. One is the Tour de Cure uh, mobile app. If you download that, you can reach out to your Facebook uh, group 
and let them know what you're doing for training and that you're participating in this. You'll be surprised at who supports you. Next slide. We have a brand new um, text to donate option. Text the word diabetes to 71760. If you're a texter, um, this is a great way to get some support for uh, your efforts. And we also have a matching gift opportunity and it's going on right now. It's from July 6th through July 18th. It's a dollar to dollar match for any do uh, donations that you raise online that amount to at least $50 uh, between now and July 18th. And it's good for the Wine Country Tour. It's also good for Silicon Valley Tour and Seattle and Alaska. And um, it's up to $50,000. So when that $50,000 goes, uh, then uh, we'll conclude the match right then and there. So get on, on it early. If you get uh, five gifts for $10, two gifts for $25, it, it counts. Uh, next slide. And by the way, we've raised over $1,000 since the campaign uh, launched officially yesterday. Uh, okay, the next slide, you can see the different uh, uh, recognition items, gifts that you can earn. Again, the t-shirt for $100. Uh, for children, it's 50. Uh, the Red Rider um, uh, gear is for $100. If you're a youth with uh, diabetes, $50. And then if you fundraise at 500 and 1,000, there's the gear there. And then we also have gifts at 2,500 and uh, 5,000. Uh, next slide. How do you get involved? Um, sign up a team at diabetes.org uh, wine country tour. Uh, join our Strava club. Follow our tour to cure social media. Get active on October 18th. Ride, run, walk, take selfies, short videos, send them to me and I'll make sure they get posted and tune into our live programming uh, via Facebook Live and more to come on that. Uh, next slide. Uh, we have some contests that we're running this month. Uh, the participant who raises the most on online from July 6th through July 18th will earn a pair of Pivlock Arena sunglasses. Uh, the next person who signs up a team will earn $50 in gift cards from Mike's Bikes. So if anyone is uh, registered as a participant, but you want to upgrade to team captain, let me know. That might be uh, your quick way to win that prize. The team captain who recruits the most team members from the 6th through the 18th also gets $50 in gift cards. The first day of event volunteer who signed up either last year or uh, this year um, and uh, registers as a participant will uh, earn a Tour de Cure uh, vintage, uh, some apparel item. And that's also true for the next person who joins our Strava Club. Uh, next slide. So we're going to open it up. Um, to questions and answers if anybody has one. And if you want to put your question in the chat bar, we'll unmute you and uh, try to answer your question. We'll give it a moment to see if any uh, questions come in. All right, I saw a question. Uh, how do you do the matching funds? So the best way is to get um, gifts online. Um, and that would be to send out a link to your uh, page, uh, Brad, the one, one um, that you received when you registered and uh, personalize your message there, send it out to your list of 
of friends and family and so forth and, and uh, wait for the donations to come in. And those that um, come in during, from the 6th to the 18th, at the end of the period, we'll be going in and applying a match uh, for you. It'll be after the 18th that you'll Yes, we're going to wait until uh, the 18th comes around and we'll be going in and, and applying that match as a credit uh, to you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. And uh, to Linda's question, do we have any suggested routes? We actually um, do not have uh, any suggested routes that we're promoting. Uh, and that's for um, insurance uh, compliance, uh, because we're unable to provide volunteer support on those routes this year. So um, we're staying away from suggested routes and uh, encouraging you to do um, uh, your own um, thing in your neighborhood or to go to a destination you've wanted to check out and ride there uh, for as much or as little distance as you, as you choose. And um, I think um, we have a suggestion from one of our uh, team captains that you might want to check out ridewithgps.com and look at routes there if you want to select one that uh, has been vetted by uh, people who are uh, frequent cyclists. Uh, message here from Rodney Paul. Um, uh, he, he and Sarah are planning on circumnavigating the San Francisco Bay setting an all-time wine country tour to, tour to cure record for doing this. Very good. All right, any additional questions? Um, the Strava team to join is strava.com uh, uh, slash clubs slash wine country tour to cure. And if you can't, um, Find it, I'll send out the link to you after this meeting. Any other questions? Thank you, everybody. Um, we will move on to the next slide, which will be our closeout. And Alan, I'm gonna turn it over to you uh, for a final word. I. I did want to acknowledge, though, all of our speakers and uh, Vivian for making this a really great um, presentation. And um, uh, Phil, special um, uh, kudos for your great words about uh, why this is such a good event to be involved with. Alan? Yeah, no, thank you, Tom. I'd like to echo you know, your thoughts there. Thank you for everybody for coming here today. Thank you to our speakers. Um, we have an incredible opportunity ahead of us, you know, with this match. Uh, so let's let's not leave this money on the table. Let's take advantage of it and, and double our impact that we can make. Last last thing I wanted to say is again, you all are our mission. You make everything uh, possible. So thank you again for everything that you do for the ADA and your continued support during these hard times. Again, we're working harder than ever to make sure that um, that we're protecting people with diabetes, uh, whether, you know, from any community that they're coming from. So thank you all for joining today and we hope to see you uh, on October 18th, if not before. See you guys online. <laughs> yeah. Stay tuned for our next activity. Sounds good. I can't wait for trivia night. <laughs> Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.